Who would have believed that something so brittle and lifeless could become as soft and smooth as silk? Yet this is what Sun Silk Silk Treatment Shampoo and Conditioner with Silk Proteins can do for dry, damaged hair. Your hair will have a luster and softness which only comes from the touch of silk. Sun Silk for the touch of silk. Keep South Australia beautiful. A message from Key Sabin. To sport now, and a gritty century from skipper Mark Taylor has saved Australia's hide in the first test against New Zealand at the Gabba. Taylor took command as the rest of the top order crumbled on a lively wicket. With the help of Ian Healy, Australia has clawed back to six for 269 at stumps. New Zealand's hopes of credibility in this series may well have lived or died by the toss and following an early plea from his captain, Can set about rebuilding the Kiwis' reputation. Well, that's well taken. With the first wicket firmly in his pocket, Can's lured Greg Blewett into a miscue. Australia, two for 46. Well, this is a chance here. And Greg Blewett is out. Mark Waugh was met with a lively reminder from Can's, a verbal welcome too from the bowler. Waugh's retort bringing his downfall. In the air. Got him. Yes, that's out. No camouflaging the delight when Steve Waugh was trapped in front for two and after scoring just a single, it seemed Ponting's contribution was over as well. Oh, I think that's out. Caught down the leg side. Yes, he's gone. He's gone. Umpire Ram Swamy didn't think so. The cause of the Kiwi dismay, obvious by the replay. That decision cost the tourists 25 runs as Ponting took charge after lunch. But after he and Taylor put on a half-century partnership, Duell got his revenge. Yes, he's got him. With questions still being asked about Taylor's place in the side, the captain looked to provide his own answers. That'll bring up 54, Mark Taylor. A pleasing crowd of more than 10,000, some of whom reminded the ACB there were options should the player dispute worsen. What did worsen was the Kiwis fielding. Healy dropped three times as he and Taylor turned the day around for Australia. The 100 partnership okay. followed by the skipper's 16th test century. That is uh, one of the finest innings you'll see. Taylor's 112, the foundation, as the last two sessions saw just two wickets fall for 208. I think when you get sent in uh, at Brisbane, and you're, especially when you're four for 50, um, it's, you certainly settle for six for 270 at stops. Andrew Slack for oh, Nightline. Great Britain has made a string of changes for the second Super League test, but many see it as simply shuffling the deck chairs. Australia remains hot favourite for the match. Centre Ryan Girdler, however, will not be part of the action. He has failed a fitness test. A knee cartilage injury wouldn't allow Ryan Girdler to stretch out at training. Brett Mullins has shifted to centre and Ken Nagus will be on the wing. Unless I can uh, get it right to be able to train next week, a full week, uh, you know, maybe I'm in doubt for the third as well. Gordon Tallis is expected to win his battle against a calf strain. It's probably about 90%, so we rest it up to nine. Four years after leaving Wigan, John Money is back at Central Park. An early season casualty from Auckland this year, now Wigan want another dose of the Money days, when the club picked up 14 trophies, including four successive league and cup doubles. And as all coaches, I live and die by, by, what I, by what I achieve, you know, so yeah, I won't have any assistance. It'll be all hands on and, uh, you know, I'll be the guy that'll cop the flack at the end. The curtain may have come down again on Diego Maradona's turbulent soccer career, but Viva Diego, the musical, is now playing in Naples. Argentina's legendary figure left his mark in Italy with a six-year stint at Napoli, winning two national titles. The musical features 100 actors and 50 musicians, but no one plays Maradona. He is depicted by a statue of a saint. Charles Christian for Nightline. In finance news, the beers are back. The Australian share market closed 57 points down today. In Tokyo, the Nikkei fell almost 700 points. In London tonight, the FTSE is 92 points down in morning trading. Gold is fetching $312 US an ounce. And in European trading tonight, the Australian dollar is buying 70.05 US cents, almost 1.2 Deutschmarks, 86.7 yen and 41 pence. The national weather, lows dominate northern Australia while a high is moving through the bite. The forecasts, fine for Brisbane and Darwin, cloudy periods for Sydney, Canberra and Adelaide, fine in Melbourne and Hobart, and for Perth, a fine day ahead as well. And that was our day. Have a great weekend. Good night.
We hope that you have enjoyed our programs here on Channel 8, your local station. And don't forget to tune in again for another full day's entertainment. But before we leave you for tonight, here is a quick preview of what's coming up over the next week on Channel 8, your local station. Saturday night of the movies. Those waves are being manufactured. Tidal wave, no escape. What's going on, Doc? A terrorist in control of the ocean. I think he doesn't care if people die. Destroying anything he wants. He loves what he's doing. But who is responsible? Do you think I would do something like this? For the first time on Channel 8. Are you crazy? Corbin Burnson. You have no idea what you just did. It's about controlling the world. Tidal wave, no escape. You got a bad sense of timing, lady. 8.35 Saturday on Channel 8. It's 8th Big Comedy Premiere. For God's sake, don't mix with the enemy. What happens when two political opponents end up in bed together? Shall we speak the unspoken language of love? You mean the kind only dogs can hear? Michael Keaton. Can you introduce me? Gina <laughs> Davis. Did you just snort? No. For the first time on television... You have no speed. Well, you know, it'll work out. In every relationship, there's a time to talk. Can you help me out for a sex? Sex. A time when words just get in the way. The premiere of Speechless, 8.30 Sunday, on it. Monday night at the movies. You got no right coming out here right. telling me how to do my job. An armed professor of law driven by conscience to take a case. I don't hear any evidence. We had a confession. Is he saving an innocent man? This confession was coerced. Or freeing a killer? You got them all fooled, don't you? You that know nothing half Sean Connery and Lawrence Fishburne. Daddy? In a superb premiere thriller. There's no one beyond my reach! Did you kill him? Just Cause, 835 Monday on 8. A couple of days ago, I was reading an article in one of our papers, and the article was about Mick Doohan. Michael Doohan, of course, is the uh, reigning world champion for the uh, Motorcycle Grand Prix. And in fact, he's just won for the fourth time. The interesting thing that caught my eye, not only about Michael's life, but a little quote that he, that he gave to the reporter, in which he said that, Obviously, when the reporter asked him about his fear, is he afraid of what he's doing? He said that he needs to have fear because it helps to keep himself safe and the other professional riders on the circuit. So fear is a very important part of our lives. Unfortunately, sometimes though, fear, if it gets out of control, can impound and destroy people. It can make you feel immobilized, it can take you into a very unhappy part of your life. Fear is common to each one of us. This is a beautiful setting here in the Umpherston Cave down in Mount Gambier. But I know that when I come down here, I have a sense of being careful as I walk down the steps. And if I was here with my children, I'd be concerned that they didn't get too close to the edge, that all the rails were safe. So we have a sense of fear as being something that protects us. Jesus said that perfect love casts out fear. And when you think about that reading, we've got to realise that that fear that Jesus talks about probably is about the fear that we might face about the end of our lives. What's it going to be like to be with Jesus? What's it going to be like to be with God? Do I really want to have a relationship with a God that talks about fear? As some of us know, in the old language we used to say, fear God. When we look at this word, we realise that we have to do something specific as we seek to understand what fear is about. Mick Doohan's words remind us, I think, that fear is one of those things that keeps us safe. But if it gets out of control, it takes us into terrible places of unhappiness. Fear in our lives must be controlled. It might be that this part of the day that you are feeling a little fearful about things. Perhaps you're worried about something that's going to happen in the next day or something that happened a while ago. It's my experience and advice that when we feel these emotions and when we're trying to work out whether it's genuine fear, that we actually talk it over with somebody else. My best advice, I guess, for you is that you do talk this over with God and talk it over with a trusted friend. Good night. As Channel 8 closes, we remind you that Lifeline continues 24 hours a day.